you came you're coming off you know arguably the 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 worst offensive performance of the year last year against San Diego State you had arguably your worst offensive performance last year what what's got to happen for this week to be different than than either of those games well, one thing I know about our team is that they'll respond to a challenge. And we certainly did not play our best. And, um, you know, like a number of other people have said, I, I don't want to take anything away from Coastal Carolina. Those guys played great. And, um, and they earned the right to win that game. But we certainly did not play our best. And we did some things um, that I think were not characteristic of, of this offense this year. And... You know, the biggest thing is there were moments where we just did not make a play, whether that be an offensive lineman making a block, um, not making a contested catch or not uh, making um, the right throw at the right time or um, the right cut uh, for a running back. And, and there was there, one of the things that I shared with the team is we watched some clips on Monday and I said, what, what's, the, what's the theme there? And a number of guys said, well, it's everywhere. And there was plenty of blame to go around. And so I think every man has to step up to the challenge and be willing to win his one-on-one -on -one matchups. And that's one of the things that we did not do consistently enough in that game. Um, and last year was the same case against San Diego State, and San Diego State is really, really good on defense, and even though Rocky's not there anymore, they're running the same system. It's an incredible challenge for an offense, in particular for an offensive line, and um, then they're good in the secondary, and they make you, they make you earn your yards, and um, there will be many opportunities in this game where we've got to win those one-on-one -on -one matchups, and so we've just got to perform better in those situations. We talked to Brady um, on Monday, and obviously he was, didn't feel like the offensive line did well. What did you see from the line? What, what has to change for them specifically? Yeah, we did not play um, certainly as well up front as we have at other times this year. And for that position, um, we need to just handle handle movement better and, and be able to um, handle guys that are moving on us. They had a very athletic front, and there were times in protection where we found ourselves matched up one-on-one, uh, -on -one and, and a guy that appeared to be going one direction went another direction, and we weren't able to stay in front of him long enough for Zach to have the kind of protection that he's had most of the year. All right, thank you, Mitch. Go ahead, then Jake. Jeff, it can be easy to get up for a game when you're you know, undefeated, and, and it, both teams are undefeated in college game days there, but how from what three days of practice this week, how do you feel the team is responding to this adversity and getting up for this game against San Diego State? Yeah, well, like I said a minute ago, I, I think our guys will respond to a challenge. And I've been here three years now, and that's one thing that I know. We've been in, in some tough spots before. And when I've challenged them, and, I, and, and I've certainly done that, um, they've responded. And I think we've got guys that have a lot of pride and they recognize that this is a moment for them to show where they can where they can move ahead. And I shared with them Monday one of my all-time favorite quotes, which is by Martin Luther King Jr. that says, the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but in times of challenge and controversy. And so this is a great opportunity for us to show what we're made of as men, and, and, I, and I know we'll step up. What did you take away as positives from that Coastal Carolina game? Because it seemed like the ground ground attack when Tyler, before he got hurt, that was doing a nice job. I mean, what were some of the positives you did take away from the film study? Yeah, the only the only real positive from that game was that we were able to move the football, um, but we didn't score nearly enough points. Um, and, um, you know, when you don't score enough points, it doesn't matter how many yards you have. So we, we were able to move the football. And I guess the only uh, – I take that back. There was one other thing. I think the way that our guys um, battled in the end and, and put us in position to still win the game, even as, as poorly as we had performed at times, w was a positive. Jeff, when it comes to a game where you guys have so little time of possession, does that up the, I guess, degree of difficulty in terms of you guys needing to execute on every play that's given to you in that type of a game? 
Yeah, yeah, it certainly does. And I, and I, you know, you, you don't ever want to allow any of those uh, external circumstances to impact your feeling. But, you know, we were on the sideline and I was talking to, to the guys and I don't think there was ever a sense of panic, but I think there was, there were a couple of moments where we felt antsy to get the ball back. And then when you get it back and you go out there and, and you don't score, I think there's an increased sense of urgency. And, you know, I think the key is to, to focus on one drive at a time and not worry about the scoreboard or the number of possessions that you have, but just to focus on what you can do in that moment. And then I wanted to ask you, you kind of answered the question a little bit earlier on, but what do you see from San Diego State that may be different this year versus what you guys saw a year ago, if anything? Not much. Um, Actually, I think they're actually doing a little bit more, and I didn't know that was possible because these guys um, line up in every front that you could draw up, and they stunt and blitz and pressure you in any number of different ways. And I I honestly have to tip my hat to them because I don't know how they get it all coached. Um, But they're doing even more this year than they were doing last year with Rocky. And so it's a lot of the same stuff. There's just even a greater volume that we have to prep for. And with regards to weather that potentially could come in this weekend, do you have to mention that to the guys saying, hey, you guys need to be extra careful holding on to the ball if there is snow, precipitation, et cetera? Yeah, I don't, I don't, we will certainly talk about the weather and, you know, Zach sent out a message to the team last night and said, hey, this is going to be fun look forward to this weather and get ready for this on Saturday and I think he set the tone with our guys before I've even had to say anything and one of the things that that I love about him and his leadership is that he's thinking ahead all the time Um, but I think you know one of the things that that I've tried to build here is is an offense that would be um, weatherproof an offense that could play in any sort of conditions and I think we're versatile enough that we can play if it's if it's 85 and sunny with no wind, or we can play if it's 15 degrees and the wind's blowing sideways with snow or rain in your face. Um, I, I think we're built to, uh, to be able to handle those conditions. And so it, again, it'll be a, a great opportunity for us to do that. And, you know, to me, there's, there's never an excuse for turning the football over. So we don't talk about being extra careful. We just talk about doing what we always do in securing the ball. All right, go ahead, Jay. Hey, Jeff, does it put more stress on an offensive coordinator or a defensive coordinator when a game is scheduled, you know, two days, three days out like it was? Um, I, I don't um, – I mean, is it easier to prepare on one side of the ball or the other? Um, I, think it, I think it might depend on, on the individual matchups and what style of offense and defense you run. Um, you know, for, for us as an offense, we try, to, we try to run the same plays from a variety of ways. Every, every week we're going to tinker with our formations and our presentations, but we're going to run the same plays. And so, we, yeah, we try to be creative in, in how we present our plays to each defense and um, – if you have a defense that is that is extremely multiple, then I think it would be even harder on them to prep. And then it depends on the style of offense that you're going to see. And so I think it would depend on the individual situation, Jay. And I don't know if you could say generically one side or the other has it harder. And then just a personnel question. I know you don't talk about inju- injuries specifically, but uh, we saw Clark Barrington and Gunnar Romney go out. Uh, do we, either of those guys have a chance to play Saturday? Yes, have a chance. Um, and so in my mind, hopeful. Um, our medical staff might say something different than that, but I'm hopeful that we'll have them back. And, um, but, we've, but we've played without guys before this season, and we'll manage just fine either way. All right, next, uh, we'll ha- maybe just one follow-up here for those of you that have some more questions. So – Go with Jared, then Jake, then Mitch. Jeff, I just wanted to ask you about just kind of from a personal standpoint, here you are at the end of the year with a game this week, maybe a game the following week, maybe probably a bowl game as well. But then also as you consider 
you know, career opportunities or, or what you want to do for your own personal future, you've had to play that game and, and figure out that balance before. What do you have to do in that circumstance to, to, to balance those two, those two different uh, aspects? You know, I've been, I've been coaching a long time and have had at various points in my career opportunities to look at other jobs throughout, throughout um, the season. And I've just never, I've never been one that's allowed those things to, to distract me from the, from the task at hand. Um, I remember when I was, when I was at Auburn, um, I, um, I, people kept talking to me kind of in, in a roundabout way about another job. And I kept saying, no, I'm not talking about any other jobs and I haven't talked to anybody. And then the day before the game, somebody called me and said, hey, would you be interested in this job? And it was a great opportunity. And I said, well, I'm not saying yes or no, but tell them to call me after we play the national championship, please. I got some, I got some work to do here the next couple of days. And so so um, I think if you're a true professional, none of that stuff ever has any impact on, on the task at hand. And, um, you know, my, my, um, my commitment, regardless of any opportunities that might or might not come my way, is, is to these guys on, on this team. And uh, if something were to come later, then I, then I would consider that later on. But I would never, ever, ever let anything distract me from, from this team and our opportunity to, to finish the right way. And really, it's no different than, than Zach or Brady or any of our underclassmen thinking about whether they want to go play in the NFL or not. You know, that's a decision that they'll make um, when the time is right to make that decision. But I know without question, those guys are not going to let it impact the way they finish this year. Jeff, it's senior night, I guess, technically on Saturday night. I know with eligibility being frozen this year, it's a little different. But just give us a thought on the guys that you could potentially be losing after the season that are seniors. Wow. You know, I haven't really haven't really even thought about that and even less so than normal because there there are those question marks out there with with any of our guys that 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 might move on. You know, obviously in the offensive line, you've got a few guys there that um, that could move on and and I hope they don't. But. Um, because I'd love for anybody that that can contribute to to come back, but at the same time, I want the best for for all of our players. And you know, in conversations that I've had with with Zach and Brady, it's been the same thing that it would be with one of our seniors who is trying to make a decision on whether to move on or not. And and ultimately, each of those guys have to do what's best for them. But I ha I haven't even given given that a, a thought yet to this point, and honestly, didn't even think about it being senior night this this week week so we'll, we'll deal we'll deal with those things um i guess when they come up sorry i don't have a better answer for that one jeff what went into the uh, or just maybe describe yesterday the moment that kyle griffiths uh got a scholarship uh you know wing tight end fullback what's he meant to the program um you know i don't like kyle much honestly um he's always kind of been in my doghouse he's he's lazy he's got a bad attitude he looks at me sideways whenever I tell him he needs to do something better. He's sitting right over here. I'm kidding. He's one of my one of my favorite guys. <laughs> you know what? If there's anybody that deserves it, it's him. And there's there's nobody that's given more um, to this team than that guy and doesn't always show in the opportunities that he gets on the field, but nobody loves this team more than Kyle Griffiths. And, and I love him for that. And his leadership, uh, is something that certainly goes beyond what anybody on the outside would notice. And, and it's, it's made an, an impact on this team.